Welcome everyone, and today we're going to go over another Udemy coding example or exercise called Flower Pack Problem. Now I want to start off by thanking anybody for tuning into the video. I want to thank anybody that's seen any past videos or just for taking a chance to watch in this video. So let's get started. We are going to start with reading the question, then we are going to discuss the logic a little bit, what we do know, what we don't know, and then start coding on the left side and see what happens. Write a method named can pack with three parameters of type int named big count, small count, and both. The parameter big count represents the count of big flower bags, five kilos each. The parameter small count represents the count of small flower bags, one kilo each. The parameter goal represents the goal amount of kilos of flower needed to assemble a package. Therefore, the sum of the kilos of big count and small count must be at least equal to the value of goal. The method should return true if it is possible to make a package with goal kilos of flour. If sum is greater than goal, ensure that only full bags are used toward the goal amount. For example, if goal equals 9, big count equals 2, and small count equals 0, the method should return false since Big bag is 5 kilos and can be divided. However, if goal 9, big count 1, and small count 5, the method should return true because 1 full big count bag and 4 small count bags equal goal. And it's okay if there's additional bags left over. If any of the parameters are negative, return false. Now that paragraph I just read is very important. It basically explains to us that you can't think of each pack of flour as a pack of flour. You have to think of the kilos of flour. So we know a big count, basically one is five kilos, and one small count is one. So you have to think like that the whole time you're creating your program. So just remember that as we start programming later. Here at the bottom, it's gonna show us some examples of input and output. And then if we scroll down a little bit more, we're going to have some notes just telling us to use public static and to not add a mean method to the tester in their Java Packer class. So let's get started with the things we do know. So we know on the first line that we write a method named can pack with three parameters of type int, big count, small count, and goal, which we already have. Then we already know that we have a goal, and we have the two given counts, which are the other three lines. Then we know that we have to have a sum of, therefore is a kilo. We do know that we're gonna have to create a new value that's gonna have to hold the difference in between the goal and the big count number and the small count number. So, just so we don't forget, I'm going to write the three, or no, I'm not going to write it there, but if you were to just code this on your own and you didn't want to have the whole problem here, you could take these three lines of the parameter goal, just so you know what's going on, and you don't forget. But first things first, I like to do is cover the easy part, which is the invalid option. So as it says at the bottom, it's basically invalid if the number, if any of the values are less than zero. So we are going to incorporate that. So if big count is less than zero or small count is less than zero. I know a lot of people say do the easy, the harder things first, but eh, it makes you feel good, you know? Small count is less than zero and goal is less than zero. Okay. Then we know we're going to return false. Also, if I didn't say it, we know that we're going to return booleans because we can see here on the right hand side, toward in that last paragraph, it's telling us that we're going to return true if the methods are correct. And we know that it is true or false or boolean because of that. Now, next thing we have to do since we took care of the false aspect now we have to get into the meat or the mathematical aspect of this problem now i'm going to write this example in the code 
because I know for me it was rough at first to kind of really understand what was going on. So, like I had mentioned earlier, the goal here is to make to meet the requirements on the right hand side, right? So we do know goal equals nine and if big count equals one and small count equals four. Then we know that that's going to equal, that's going to return true because it will equal 9. So the way we're going to do that is we are going to create a, another new variable called int big count, which is going to hold the total amount of the big count number. That's just the placeholder. And then we are going to have big count total equal big count times 5 because when we get the value in from the user it's only going to count it one time and then just for purposes of kind of seeing and understanding what's going on I'm going to create three print statements so we can see the big count total the small count and the goal and again if you guys want to code all this on your own before you see me do it, you guys can always pause at the beginning of the video, come back later and see how I did it, and then leave it in the comments below of if you guys got a different answer than me, or hey, maybe you guys just coded it in a different language, and you guys want to share that. That's cool too. Okay, plus small count. And also, since we're on a little break, as you guys are seeing me write out print statements, please don't hesitate to check the i in the upper right hand corner for any new videos or any videos that are related to this one that may help you with this one and then don't forget to subscribe in the bottom right hand corner and check in the description for below for any new videos also for my social media accounts if you guys want to follow those and stay tuned with me for daily updates on the code and last but not least we are going to do goal So now we have the three print statements set up. Now I'm going to create another new variable called total. This is basically created so that we can see the big count total plus the small count. So it's not exactly the goal number yet, but we're getting pretty close to it. So now with the variable total, we are going to compare total to goal. Goal. So if total equals goal, which is the easiest option, which is what we want, then we're just going to return true. And I'll make a little print statement here. We can just put goal net. Okay, and then we also have to account for different possibilities as well. For example, um, another example could be basically if the numbers don't match right away. So, uh, kind of how we can see here on the right hand side, when, oh, I think that's the negative here. Oh, like right here. You see where it says 2, 2, and 11? You got a big count of 2 bags, which is 10, and you got a small count of 11 bags. Of 2. I'm sorry, of two bags, which would equal 12, right? And the goal is 11, but they're still saying it's true. So you have to be able to account for that. So the way we're going to do that is we're basically going to check to see the if there's a remainder between goal, big count, and goal. And if there isn't a remainder, we're going to step through big count big count total is greater than goal and this is just for if big count is greater we're also going to do it if small count is as well so we're going to do big count total five. so basically what that does or what line 30 does 
is it's gonna step through big count and it's gonna keep incrementing it by five. And last but not least, we are going to take care of the small count difference. So a small value equals goal minus big count total. Oopsies. Now I'm going to use something here that I've never talked about on this channel before because it's kind of confusing. And I'm going to do my best to explain it. If it helps you guys understand, please leave it in the comments below. So, what we're about to do here is something called a journey operator. I've never seen this in any other language except for Java. If you guys have seen this in other languages, go ahead and leave that in the comments below, because I've never heard of this before Java. So, basically what a journey operator is, for those that don't know, a journey operator is basically taking care of three operations all in one line of code. That's the simplest way I can put it. And I'm going to explain it to you here after I code it out. So, basically what line 32 and 33 does is they work together. They take care of if small is, if the small, if once you add the small count, if it's greater than goal. So, it's basically the same thing as I did above, but it's just styled a little differently. So, it's saying if int values, small value is equal to goal minus big count value big count total sorry so like for example right if we look back at 2 to 11 which I'll run that as well to prove it, it works what it's gonna do is it's gonna do the goal which we know is 11 minus the big count total which is 10 and then it's gonna see it only needs one and then it's gonna check the small count which is 2 then it's gonna check the small value which we know in this case the small value is one so because big count is greater than small value it'll equal true or false and basically if it's you know if it's bigger then it's still going to return true if it's smaller then it's going to return false so let's start the main method now and well, i'll start with that problem so you guys can see what's going on. So like I said previously, we have to declare boolean variables in order to run our expressions or our methods. So we're just going to store it in the declared variable can pack. And we are going to start with 2, 2, and 11. Just to make sure that works. Then we are going to sys out if it is true or false. Just so we can see it. So let's go. Let's see if we get true. And we do. I did a little, it didn't look all pretty right there, but as you guys can see, it clearly shows what I was explaining. The big count total is 10, the small count total is 2, the goal is 11. They still want us to print out true because it's over, not under. Let's save that because everything looks pretty okay so that was a true example let's try one zero and five so the goal is five the big count is one and the small count is zero so the answer should just return true automatically because big count and goal are going to match easily and there you have it and then it came out the little print sign print out method that the goal is met easily so let's go ahead and copy all of the code we just created and put it in the Udemy tester and see if we got it right. As you guys know, go ahead and leave in the comments down below, below if you guys learned anything new. I want to thank you guys for sticking with me this long. And if you haven't left a like, please leave a like or a comment or both. And share the video if you know you want to share with people about learning a turning out. Alright, let's see. Woo! We got it on the first try. Yay! So yeah, if you guys have any problems with this, 
problem, please let me know. I know it was rough for me at first, but it got easier once you kind of understand the logic behind what's going on. So again, I want to thank you guys for watching. I want to thank you guys for the support. If there's anything you guys want me to go over, please let me know in the comments down below. And just keep coding. Have a great day. Bye.